Uh, hello, everybody. Today, I'm going to present you some non-invasive abdominal pressure monitoring techniques that can be that can potentially be used in the future in order to track intra-abdominal pressure. First, let me introduce myself very briefly. My name is Salar, a biomedical engineer. And at the moment, I'm working on non-invasive abdominal pressure monitoring, more specific on microwave reflectometry in an inter-university program between VUB, Free University of uh, Brussels, and uh, also the University of Ghent. Okay, I'm going to start this uh, presentation with a short introduction about the conventional abdominal pressure monitoring techniques. And then I start uh, presenting the non-invasive methods. After discussing the novel non-invasive techniques, I present you a brief summary and conclusion to wrap up uh, this presentation. OK. Uh, as you already know, intraperitoneal, intravesical, and uh, intragastric measurement techniques are the main conventional abdominal pressure measurement methods to be used for the monitoring of critically ill patients with a high risk of abdominal hypertension development. Intraperitoneal method is a direct measurement that carries a high risk of infection and bleeding, and so it is not recommended to use this technique, but in emergency cases. On the other side, intragastric and intrabladder measurements are indirect methods that are more common to be used in the intensive care units and based, uh, as you probably know, based on the guidelines of the Abdominal Compartment Society. Uh, intravesical measurement is uh, the reference standard for abdominal pressure monitoring. Although these techniques are reliable and accurate and useful enough to be used for critically ill patients to monitor these patients, it might be a good idea to improve abdominal pressure monitoring procedure in a way that we will be able to monitor abdominal pressure in a continuous and, of course, non-invasive way to finally uh, improve the patient, uh, the patient care in the ICU. Okay, the main idea behind all these monitoring techniques is to find the main impact of abdominal pressure on the human body, and then subsequently track that uh, parameter. And finally, by means of calibration, we can convert the abdominal pressure into another kind of signal and monitor abdominal pressure based on that secondary signal. Uh, this presentation covers the application of plethysmography, tensiometry, ultrasound tonometry, bioimpedance analysis, and microwave reflectometry in abdominal pressure monitoring. And first, uh, let's go to plethysmography. As shown in this slide, uh, the main idea is that uh, the abdominal pressure elevation increases the abdominal volume. And this volume change can be detected by inductance plethysmography. As you see in this figure, by placing uh, extendable abdominal and thoracic coils around the patient's body, Abdominal volume changes can be monitored based on the quantity of elongation and subsequently quantity of inductance change uh, in, in the abdominal and thoracic coils. And uh, this is that uh, secondary measurable signal for us to monitor abdominal pressure. Here, uh, you see patients set up with thoracic and abdominal inductance plethysmography belts, as well as the tracings achieved by uh, respiratory inductance plethysmography. In such a way, abdominal volume can be monitored based on the inductance changes or elongation level of the thoracic and abdominal coils. And lastly, abdominal pressure can be calculated by dividing the abdominal volume by the abdominal compelliance. Hmm? 
And uh, as can be seen in this figure, I mean in this uh, monitor, uh, abdominal and thoracic volume changes are tracked by means of plethysmography, and the abdominal pressure is calculated based on the principle uh, explained here. Okay, this was uh, the first one, and now let's go to uh, next technique, tensiometry, which is a kind of palpation to examine the required force to generate a specific displacement on the abdominal wall and is dependent on the abdominal compliance as well. The main idea is that the abdominal pressure influences the abdominal compliance and tensiometry is a technique that reflects abdominal compliance and of course, abdominal uh, pressure. Here you see different tensiometers that were used by different researchers. The main issue of this measurement technique was the lack of uh, a standardized tensiometer, but uh, this year, this commercial tensiometer was introduced in Medica 2020 in Dusseldorf and is able to perform digital palpation in a standard rate, so no problem anymore. And here you see the results from a study done on uh, 51 ICU patients to investigate the correlation between the abdominal pressure and the, the abdominal wall tension, as can be seen. An almost linear correlation was found between abdominal wall tension and the abdominal pressure measured through the bladder. And as illustrated, abdominal wall tension is uh, higher at the larger abdominal pressure values. Okay, next technique, ultrasound tonometry. In this technique, we perform sonography while we know the exact external pressure value being exerted to the ultrasound probe by the sonographer. This can be done by combining an ultrasound probe with a pressure transducing system to measure the external pressure on the ultrasound probe. Here you see the vein press system, uh, an ultrasound tonometer that the external applied pressure by the sonographer can be measured based uh, on the pressure inside the fluid filled uh, membrane and uh, the compartment radius can be determined by the ultrasound probe. By such a way, elastic ratio defined as the ratio of the abdominal compartment radius with and without applied pressure can be measured. The hypothesis behind this technique is that the abdominal pressure fluctuations change the elastic ratio of the abdominal compartment. And this parameter is that secondary uh, parameter that can be used to monitor abdominal pressure. As you see here, when intracompartmental pressure goes up, the elastic ratio increases as well, which means that uh, the ratio of the compartment radius with and without external pressure increases as a function of pressure. It means that uh, when, the compartment, uh, when the compartmental pressure increases, the D2 here in this figure, becomes larger and larger, and this increase is greater than D1, which results in uh, greater elastic ratios. And uh, by this way, we can use uh, ultrasound tonometry to monitor abdominal pressure. Uh, next group of techniques consists of bioimpedance analysis and microwave reflectometry. The concept behind these techniques is that the abdominal pressure uh, influences the geometric properties of abdominal wall, its shape and thickness. And subsequently, these geometric parameters uh, influence some electromagnetic parameters of the abdominal wall, its impedance and dielectric permittivity, which can be monitored by bioimpedance analysis and microwave reflectometry, respectively. Okay, as shown in this slide for bioimpedance analysis, 
we need to place the impedance sensors on the abdomen and uh, monitor impedance fluctuations versus abdominal pressure. This study uh, here by Marcelo Davy showed that the abdominal pressure elevation reduces the impedance of the abdominal wall, which is mainly due to the thickness reduction of the abdominal wall. Uh, regarding microwave reflectometry, we can either place a sensor on the abdomen or use a microwave antenna in front of abdominal wall and analyze the reflected waves by using a vector network analyzer, a device that analyzes uh, microwave uh, reflected microwaves, and uh, the same relation can be seen between the abdominal pressure and the reflection coefficient, S11. So S11 is uh, the reflection coefficient, which shows the quantity of reflection of the abdominal wall, which means that at higher abdominal pressure values, less reflection can be seen which is again mainly due to thickness reduction of the abdominal wall and also its shape. Okay, conclusion. Uh, in this presentation, I introduce you five uh, main non-invasive techniques that, that can be used to monitor abdominal pressure. However, there are still more ideas and techniques but uh, due to lack of time, I decided to explain the ideas that are more investigated. Uh, for instance, in addition to the explained methods, digital image correlation can be seen uh, in, in left is another technique that uh, can be used to measure abdominal pressure based on the deformation contour of the abdominal wall or using smart capsules, which uh, directly measure the gastric pressure and by means of a microprocessor and transmitter transfers the pressure values to a receiver outside patient's body. So these are other ideas, other techniques that can be used uh, in addition to the explained ones. In general, each of the explained techniques uh, has some advantages and also some disadvantages as you, as you see, plethysmography, tensiometry, ultrasound tonometry are relatively less expensive, faster and simpler methods compared uh, with microwave reflectometry and bioimpedance analysis. Uh, however, the accuracy and reliability of bioimpedance analysis and microwave reflectometry might be higher and uh, choosing the most suitable method highly depends on our expectations. Furthermore, it should be pointed out that all these techniques are able to track abdominal pressure fluctuations only and, uh, and to know the absolute pressure value, we need to know, we need to predict the initial pressure value based on initial thickness of abdominal wall, body metrics, or also we can measure uh, abdominal pressure through the bladder by intravesical technique at the first time, and then track its changes by non-invasive, by the explained non-invasive techniques. Additionally, uh, artificial intelligence and deep learning is another option to be combined with the explained techniques and it can resolve uh, the issue of initial abdominal pressure prediction. And in my opinion, uh, this can be the next generation of clinical monitoring. Uh, as I see, my time is about to finish and uh, I'd like to say thank you for your attention.